does your cargo, Captain? Think you can manage it? Manage it? Why not? Why, I've come back from a whaling trip sometimes with as many as 400 barrels. Of whale oil, yes, but this is rock oil, petroleum. Well, what's the difference? That's the difference. This oil gives off gas. The devil it does. What's it for? Oh, paraffin lights your lamps and heavy oil greases your steam engines. Keep the devils chained up and you can put them to work. There you are, Captain. That's the first freight of oil for England. This is going to be a tricky job with all these fellas trying to escape. Now, let me see. Warn other craft to keep clear. No naked lights. No smoking. Easy with those casks now. Storm carefully, bung up and build free. And mind they don't fetch a drift when we get to sea. Once the barrels start to leak, the hold gets full of gas. And then we're likely to blow up at any moment. Good morning, Captain. How's the oil business? Selling like hot cakes. Ready for another freight? Yes, but I don't like those barrels. All right, then. We'll clear them out and fit iron tanks instead. There you are. Thirteen tons apiece. Ah, and what sort of freight do I bring back with all those tanks blocking up my hold? Yeah, looks as if this petroleum's going to be a one-way freight, Captain. Let's make the most of it, then. Get in all the tanks she'll carry. Like this. Or this. Or this. Wait a minute. Suppose we have a steamship. Now, where should we put the tanks? Put them like this. Each side of the propeller shaft. And the same forehead. Bigger tanks mean less weight. What about this? Hmm. If that long propeller shaft wasn't in the way, you could have two big tanks. Put the engines aft. If it comes to that, why not make the hull itself into a tank? The hull itself? All right. But we'll need a bulkhead fore and aft. And she wants cutting up into small compartments. Now, what happens when we're at sea? space for the gas. We'll bring a deck down, like this. And allow room for expansion, like this. That keeps the main tanks full and keeps the cargo quiet. But what about those side compartments? Oh, we'll carry oil in them too, when we load to our summer marks. Yes, that's the way to carry oil at sea. Engines aft. Continuous trunkway for expansion. No double bottoms in her holds. And she discharges with her own pumps. There you are, the Gluckauf, the first modern tanker. I suppose gas is still a problem. Well, we've got to be careful because air goes in while the oil goes out and makes an explosive mixture with the gas inside the tank. So we chase it out with steam. <laughs> When it's safe to open the hatches, we drive out the remnants with fresh air. Seems they can take all the oil we can carry. 
Well, then we'll have to double the size of your ship. Now, it's not as simple as that. You can double her length and beam, if you like. But you can't increase the draft unless you put more water in all the world's harbors. And the bigger the ship, the bigger the strain when she bridges across the waves. She's too heavy aft. We'd better put the engines back amidships. There. That'll help to spread the load. And give me a chance to trim her, too. But look at that long shaft tunnel with all those oil-tight joints. No, no, too expensive. Now, how can we build a big ship strong enough to bear her engines aft? All the strain is on the hull plating. Hold on. Suppose we take out all these frames and lay them the other way, like this. That's the answer. Stiffen her like this and she'll stand up to anything. This kind of ship will carry more, and yet she'll be stronger and cheaper to build. Ah, the British inventor. Now we can build them as big as we like. Yes, we can look forward to faster and more economical ships. come a long way, haven't we, Captain?